Hello. Thank you for coming to my talk. Also, big thanks to the organizers for inviting me to speak at this conference. My name is Roman Gershman, and I am the creator of the Dragonfly project. Before working on Dragonfly, I was a principal engineer at the AWS Elasticash team. And before that, I worked at Google and was one of the architects behind the Google Suggest service. So what is Dragonfly? Dragonfly is a modern replacement for memory stores like Redis and Memcached. It scales vertically on a single instance to support millions of requests per second. And it is more memory efficient, has been designed with reliability in mind, and it includes a better caching design. But today I'm going to talk about how a unique hash table design helped Dragonfly bound its tail latency. Also, I'll discuss the trade-offs along the way. I've uh, always been passionate about efficient data structures and hash tables in particular. I've studied many wonderful hash table designs. Additionally, I've been using very robust, efficient implementations like, for example, AppCell flat hash map by Google. But a few years ago, when studying the Redis code, I noticed something that I hadn't seen in any hash table before. Its Redis dictionary implementation supports incremental rehashing during the resize operation. As you probably remember, in a classic hash table, the insertion time is amortized constant. It's amortized partly because once in a while, the hash table must perform a heavy operation like resize as part of its insertion flow. And this operation takes a long time. Now, if you look at the typical resize operation on the slide, it has two parts, the allocation part and the rehash part that moves all the existing items to their new position. Redis Dictionary, however, only performs the allocation part when doing resize, and it doesn't perform rehashing immediately. Instead, it switches to the incremental rehashing state. Then, it rehashes items gradually with each subsequent API call. Here on the slide, you can see how dict rehash step is triggered during the get operation, but it's the same for any other API call. By removing the rehash part, Regis Dictionary speeds up its resize operation for large tables and reduces the tail latency of its inserts. I was very intrigued with this unusual modification. So, I measured the insert latency on one of the fastest hash tables I knew, Epsil uh, flat hash map. Of course, this uh, flat hash map doesn't use any incremental rehashing. Therefore, I could learn how latency looks like before any fixes. So I inserted 100 million integers into the flat hash map, and I measured the, the time that each insertion took. And you can see that this flat hash map is really, really fast. It takes only 150 nanoseconds on the average to do an insert, almost as fast writing as writing into RAM. Again, I will read it. Of course, this flat hash map doesn't use any incremental rehashing. Therefore, I could learn how latency looks like before any fixes. So I inserted 100 billion integers into the a flat hash map, and I measure the time that each insertion took. And you can see that this flat hash map is really, really fast. It takes only 150 nanoseconds on average to do an insert, almost as fast as writing into RAM. But the maximum latency of a single insert is staggering. It's almost two seconds. Uh, you can see it on the right, and by the way, all graphs in this talk use a logarithmic scale. Now, for in-memory stores, uh, one second is almost an eternity. Redis, for example, can perform hundreds of thousands of operations in one, seconds, in one second, and Dragonfly can do millions. I also measured latency of the Redis dictionary, and if you look uh, at how it compares to flat hash map, you can see that Redis Dictionary is three times slower on average, but its slowest operation is actually three times faster because of the incremental rehashing. Three times less is an improvement in the right direction, of course, but we still 
experience six orders of magnitude difference in maximum latency versus average. Uh, still, uh, the attention to detail in Redis Dictionary really struck me, and I was curious whether there are other approaches on how to reduce maximum latency for large hash tables. And this brings us to a data structure called extendable hashing from 1979, and it's modern improvement called dash table from uh, 2020. In the next slides, I'm going to explain the idea behind them. As you know, a classic chain hash table is just a dynamic array of linked lists. The linked lists are required for collision resolution. Hash tables uh, keep the length of their bucket array at least as long as number of items in the table, so that their linked list will be short on average. So, for example, with 100 million records, they would need to allocate a 100 million long bucket array. And we just saw that such allocations take a long time. Here's an idea. Uh, let's use hash tables instead of linked lists within each bucket. Then our inserts or lookups within a bucket will be of constant complexity, even for buckets with lots of items. And if we can put lots of records inside the bucket, then we can reduce dramatically the length of uh, the bucket array while still preserving the same table capacity. We call those in, in bucket hash tables a segment. So for example, if each segment has a predefined capacity of 1,000 items, then we can reduce our bucket array by a factor of 1,000. Uh, now, you probably noticed that I defined our hash table using another hash table. But as a matter of fact, it's not really a problem. Our segments are simplified hash tables. They are of constant size with an uh, open addressing scheme for conflict resolution. These are much simpler to implement than a generic growing hash table. We will see it in a couple of slides. Let's follow a uh, dash table insertion flow. Upon insertion, each item is routed to a specific segment based on its hash value. If that segment is full, then a new segment is added to the segment array, and the contents of that full segment are split with the new segment. It's important to know that we only move the records uh, from the single segment rather than shuffling the whole table. The innovation of extendable hashing, the paper from 70s, is how it can add or remove segments without rehashing the whole table and still find all the records afterwards. I want to stress this point. Usually when a hash table grows, uh, most of its records need, need to move, but in this case, most of the records stay in the same place, even if, uh, when we add a new segment. I will explain at high level how it works in the next slides. In that, another interesting uh, point to note since our segments have capacity for a thousand records, the segment addition will happen on average once in a thousand insertions and will take a constant time. Now I mentioned before that our segments are built upon flat arrays of length 1000. Let's see how we could implement the segment insert operation uh, that corresponds to the function call at line 3 here. The most naive approach would be something like on the slide, to insert the item to a position induced by its hash value. Of course, due to the birthday paradox, this approach is not very efficient and will often return uh, the full result when the segment is far from being full. Our table won't be utilized well in this case. Now, the contribution of the dash table paper mainly revolves around the segment design. Specifically, it implements a very fast and memory-efficient open addressing scheme uh, that reaches 95% occupancy rates. Due to, uh, due to time constraints, I won't cover it here, but you're welcome to read the docs in our GitHub repository or just uh, read the paper which is always advised. 
Let's see how extendable hashing routes its keys and maintains a perfect locality during the growth operations. Let's see how extendable hashing routes its keys and maintains a perfect locality during the growth operations. Conceptually, the extendable hashing keeps its uh, segments in a binary tree structure. Segments are represented by leaves in the tree. In order to route an item's hash value to a segment, we extract the most significant part of the hash, hash value and use it as a guiding path towards uh, the segment. You can see the example mapping on the left of the slide. So, for example, all items with most significant bits 0, 0, 1 in their hash value will be routed to segment number 2. Now let's see how the segment splitting works. Uh, suppose segment 5 becomes, becomes full and needs splitting. Uh, the extendable hashing splits it into two segments and moves the items from the old leaf segment to the new ones according to the next significant bit of their hash values. This is how the table grows uh, locally without reshuffling all its contents. Let's see how Dash table compares to Redis dictionary. Again, I ran the benchmark that inserts uh, 100 million integers into both tables. You can see that uh, the Dash table is pretty fast, uh, twice as fast as Redis dictionary on average. But the most dramatic improvement is in its maximum latency. We have a, a 415 times lower latency of Dash table than with Redis dictionary. These are really good results, but with only one uh, outlier, which is the 99.9th percentile. To understand why the P99.9 of Dash table is seven times slower than in Redis dictionary, we should look at the frequency distribution of insertion latencies for Dash table. This graph shows frequency of latency percentiles when we inserted 100 million records. We can clearly see that its shape has two overlapping distributions. The first one centered somewhere below the 70th percentile, and most of insertions are grouped there. The second one is centered around the 99.9th uh, percentile. Why? Now, if you remember, we showed how the Dash table adds a new segment once in 1,000 insertions. Adding a new segment is much heavier operation than the usual fast insert. And once in 1,000 is exactly 1 minus P99.9. Therefore, a P99.9 reflects the impact of segment addition. So it being more slow is not a surprise. To summarize, even though P99.9 um, of a dash table is seven times higher than of Redis dictionary, we consider it an acceptable trade-off because it's still under one millisecond and it's totally fine for an in-memory store. In return, we reduce uh, the maximum latency by a factor of hundreds. Is it still possible to decrease the P99.9 latency when using dash table? I'll leave this question to you as an exercise. Dragonfly uses dash table, which is faster than a regular hash table. More importantly, it provides a bounded, predictable latency even for extremely large hash tables. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy my talk.